all right so in this particular video i'm going to explain um, how we are going to measure our effects say for example if you have a exposure or a treatment how do you really measure the impact of that treatment or exposure on the outcome so there are a couple of uh, useful definitions uh, such as um, average treatment effect or average treatment effect on the treated which are usually known as ATE and ATT and in this particular video I'm going to explain uh, what those mean so for explaining that concept using an example um, let us consider this particular example where i have an exposure variable say for example um, a person who is taking rosuvastatin is an exposed person and in that case we will define a equal to one and if um, we have a person who does not take that particular drug um, we call that a equal to zero that means that this person is in the control group say let us define our outcome total cholesterol level and in terms of our total cholesterol level we um, this is our outcome and this rosuvastatin drug is something that helps reduce the total cholesterol level so in here let me define a potential outcome notation that means uh, i am saying y in parenthesis a equal to one that means what would happen to the outcome of total cholesterol level if this person took the rosuvastatin drug right so in that case y in parenthesis a equal to 1 means that potential outcome when a subject is exposed this does not necessarily have to be observed by you and me this is something that say for example in a con for our conceptual understanding we define this kind of potential outcome notation and when we say y in parenthesis a equal to zero that means total cholesterol level if the person did not take rosuvastatin right so the potential outcome when not exposed again these are not observed value these are just values that is uh, something that uh, we can potentially expect when uh, we experiment these subjects under specific condition and what are those conditions being under rosuvastatin and not taking rosuvastatin these are the just two conditions under which uh, we are expecting these outcomes and we call them potential outcome all right so there are three different types of um, effect of an exposure on an outcome we are going to consider uh, we already talked about average treatment effect and average treatment effect on the treated um, we also have a treatment effect for an individual so this is not average so this is individualistic we call it uh, treatment effect or te and rest of these are ate and att all right so to explain the idea of um, treatment effect on an individual level let us consider the scenario that uh, John is a subject for our study and uh, we give John rosuvastatin drug so we observe John rosuvastatin under rosuvastatin for three months and after three months we observe the potential outcome for this person what is the potential outcome cholesterol level the total cholesterol level in milligrams uh, milligrams per deciliter so let's say 195 is his potential outcome after three months of observation all right now think of a scenario where 
let's just say you have a time machine and you go back in time and you at the time when we were giving John the prescription of the Rosovastatin we do not give prescription of Rosovastatin uh, to John anymore um, and we do not give any Rosovastatin and we keep following him for three months and after three months of follow-up we see that the potential outcome for not taking any rosuvastatin is 245 milligram per deciliter after same three months right so this is loosely based on um, the concept of crossover trial where you can observe same person under two different conditions but in two different timelines right but now we are saying in here in this particular example we are not even considering two different timelines we are considering one timeline but we observe that timeline twice so just by my mentioning time machine you already understand that the effect of rostovastatin on john that we are going to measure is going to be a conceptual effect um, so that means what would be the effect of rostovast uh, effect of rostovastatin on the total cholesterol level versus what would be the effect of not taking rostovastatin on the cholesterol level right and how do we do we calculate the treatment effect on an individual for john it is simply the difference between these two time points or that these two uh, potential outcomes so in here the effect is minus 50 so this is the individual treatment effect right and then let me consider five different subjects in our study now and we have John, Jim, Jake, Cody, Luke. We observe them first under rosuvastatin under treatment, and then we send all of these five persons in back in time, and then we again follow them, but this time we do not give them any rosuvastatin, and then we can estimate all of these treatment effects. And how do we calculate the average treatment effect in that case? We simply take the average of these and that will give us the average treatment effect. All right, so the way average treatment effects are interpreted from this table is that we get an estimate of what would be the effect if everybody in the population was exposed versus what is the effect of treatment on the outcome if nobody in the population was exposed right and then we get both of these estimate and we use this average treatment effect to get that type of treatment effect understand this that in this table i am explaining in a conceptual level and usually to operationalize this type of ATE type of effects, we can use some sort of weighted analysis to get the estimate of these versus the estimate of these, right? But for the practical problems that we usually face, we are usually interested about whether one drug, one new drug is effective or not, and we generally compare it with another standard of care treatment so in that type of scenario where where we are basically interested about the new treatment and uh, we we do have a control group but that control group is um, a separate group we do not necessarily want everybody to be exposed versus nobody to be exposed we here want some people to be exposed and some people not to be exposed and that is something that is operationalizable in real life and it is easy to explain as well so to to go about that let me consider these five person in our 
study first and then we give all of them all of these five persons the rosovastatin right and then we observe what do they look like they were say for example they were all white they were all male they were all 50 years of age all of them and let's just assume that race sex and age are the only thing that is impacting the relationship between whether a patient gets resuvastatin versus the cholesterol, total cholesterol level so the association between the exposure and the outcome is being impacted by only these three characteristics if that was the case then let us recruit five more people in our study who are also white also male and also 50 years of age and then this time these five people these five new recruits we are going to observe them under no treatment or no rosuvastatin will be given to them right so this is something that we actually can do without a time machine and how do we really compare them we simply take an average of these we simply take an average of these and then we simply take the difference between these two averages right where we are basically interested about this treated group so we basically chose our control group based on the characteristic of our treated group groups persons and the difference between these two are coming from two different groups not from the same person twice using a time machine so this is what the difference is what we call as the average treatment effect on the treated so in this particular example we will see minus 30 would be the average treatment effect on the treated all right so if we are working with a randomized clinical trial we do not have to think about this kind of matching of white male 50 years of age and things like that because no matter whether those variables are associated with our treatment of interest or outcome of interest by the process of randomization the treated group and untreated group would be balanced if we have enough sample size and if we have enough sample size then our ATT and ATE would be equivalent so in a randomized clinical trial this is not really an issue the problem is in an observational study the ATT and ATT are not necessarily the same and this is particularly because we exactly need to know which of these characteristics are making the treated and untreated groups different in randomized clinical trial we do not care whether we know these characteristics or not they will be balanced uh, by the process of randomization if we have enough sample size but in a observational study that will not be the case generally speaking all right so there are two different types of estimates we are going to use um, the first one is about the population we call them population ATE and population ATT and the second one can be from the sample the sample ATE and the sample ATT thanks